Hello and welcome back to World of Warships. I am your host, Numbire, and today I'm in the Tier 10 French light cruiser, the Colbert. Uh, here we are, top tier, light on the Tier 9s, couple Tier 8s, but heavy on the Tier 10s, with five battleships per team. Let's see what I can get up to with this little French cruiser. Now, about the Colbert. The Colbert is a reward ship through the Research Bureau. And comes with a three second reload on the guns. And has eight gun turrets. Now you can't fire them all at the same time unless you're in very specific positioning. Maybe we'll see that this match, maybe not. Another great thing about this ship is its engine boost. It is very, very long. As you can see, I am paired up with Neversink and Farmer. Neversink is right there to the right in the Fletcher. And Farmer is off to the right in his Stalingrad. As you can see, the engine boost is over four minutes in time. With four charges, that's over 16 minutes of engine boost for this cruiser. And it's really helpful to have that long and fast engine boost because this thing's armor is pretty much at the level of the Atlanta. It's pretty much destroyer armor with a citadel. So you kind of have to be really careful when you play this. Either you need to be running away, you can dodge the shells, or be behind islands and lob them over. Because yeah, it does have the American ballistics where you can shoot over islands. Oh, enemy Moskva. Gun range on the Colbert is relatively short, especially after the captain rework. You can't get AFT on it anymore at 13.8 kilometers. Far enough to be out of gun range of most radars in this game. And as you can see, Neversink is laying a smoke while he gets away from the Moskva, and I'm going to be firing armor piercing, ripple fire out of this thing, getting seven gun turrets firing at that attic. Now these are only 127mm guns, but I mean even on an Adigo, the AP on this thing is adding up quickly. Masfa has me radar, so I've been up behind the island, waiting for the radar to dissipate. And there it goes, radar is off. So I can use this smoke screen, played by Neversink, thank you Neversink, to its full advantage. Now I've got the high explosive loaded, and the high explosive is a lot of fun to work with, because you can set fires. Oh, farmer over there fired up his radar. There is the enemy Benson, which I think was what lit, lit up Neversink earlier. But you can see me opening fire on the Benson, trying to get over that island and hit him. But anyway. Now, I am technically out of the smoke screen, but it's in a nice big loop around me, thanks to Neversink. I'm able to shoot the Adigo undetected. Looking back towards the Benson, because that's who I really want to get out of here to help out Neversink, because if I can get rid of him, Neversink's going to be the only destroyer over here. But I found a Massachusetts behind the island and just decided. His upcoming forecast is uh, showers with a chance of fire. There it is, the fire. I mean, just look at the amount of fire this thing goes out. I'm only using six turrets at this point. I'm perfectly broadside on, which means those two rear turrets can't fire. Sorry, the two starboard turrets can't fire. Oh, Benson poked out a bit. Tried to take a swing at him, but that's a negative Ghost Rider. Neversink is up there proxy detecting that Benson. Not a bad move. Keeps him lit, and now I'm shooting at the Conqueror. And we all know how the Conqueror is. And that Conqueror isn't using any camo, but it looks like. Look at the amount of shells that are in the air before they start landing on that Conqueror. Conqueror isn't shooting at me. So you can see me slow down. Oh, Benson came out, so switching fire immediately to him to help out Neversink. Watch how quickly this remainder of this Benson's health melts. And there's first blood. 
about five minutes in, and the first kill. And now I'm using this island here to, to block fire from the conqueror, and I'm still able to shoot over it. That conqueror has decided, I don't want any of that cold air right now, but I still get a fire on him. Front turrets can get past the island. Oh, moved up enough that I can get the rear turrets over. Now I'm just gonna rain fire down on him. Look at this. He's able just to park it here and just rip him up. Never sink over there is getting a bit of a paddling from Masma. And we just lost Never Sink. I'm just sitting here, holding down the right mouse button, keeping an eye on the enemy ships. Well, I just ripple fire that conquer. He is triggering his heal. He's printing himself a new boat. I'm still hitting that conquer, adjusting my aim a bit, trying to land more shells. Look at this number of shells I'm playing. And the conquer's got left range, but that Mosfa is in range. Reverse and angle to get the other gun turrets into play. Raining fire down on the Mosfa. In situations like these where the Colbert really shines, they can't see me, they can't shoot me, and I can just rain down fire. The Mosfa doesn't seem to be wanting to move, so I'm just racking up damage. I mean, look at this one. I'm already over 100,000 damage, and we're, not even, we're barely over six minutes into the match. Farmer's moved up into Stalingrad. <laughs> kind of risky there, Farmer, but... Hey, he's doing what he needs. What he thinks he needs to do. So I can only applaud him for pushing up and getting to the cap and being aggressive with the Stalingrad. We are ahead by two kills and up by over 200 points. So, do we actually need it? I'm not. I I can't answer that. Oh, Majesty just it's back. Open it up again. Trying to help out Farmer by getting rid of that battleship. Trying to, you know, as much as I can. Oh, Masva came out. Masva took a swing at me. RNG says no. And here's where I am kiting with the engine boost on. Except that uh, for driving map awareness, I end up running into the island. to see, okay, how am I going to get out of here? I mean, even with only four turrets on the rear being able to fire, it's still a decent amount of fire to be put on that last mode by explosive. There's Confederate already. Eight minutes, just over seven and a half minutes and I already have a Confederate. If that, imagine if this was Halsey on this ship, which obviously I can't do, but the Confederate boost is the rate of fire on a Confederate on a ship with this thing's reload, which is about three seconds, and there it goes Farmer. This is the Mosfa, did a drive by, but I'm going to avenge Farmer. No, I'm not. <laughs> Massachusetts secondary switch kills. Angle out, run away from the enemy ships. Sorry, Massachusetts, but I have a lot less armor than you. And now time to refire fire back on the Massachusetts. Just look at that rain of fire. I have asked random players in these matches, uh, what's worse, the Smolensk or the Colbert? And I've gotten mixed responses. Some say the Colbert, some say the Smolensk in terms of what's worse to fight. I'd say they're about even. I know that's saying a lot. I'm trying to wiggle in case the Massachusetts wants to shoot at me. I mean, just look at how fast that Massachusetts has melted from my high explosive span. I'm slowing down to make sure I can keep shooting at this Massachusetts around this corner of the island. This is actually a pretty nice strategy to be able to call. And the Massachusetts sank our Massachusetts. About 10 minutes in, and I have almost 200,000 damage.
just by sitting on this flank. Haven't really lost a whole lot of health because everybody else is in front of me. Now let's see, what do I do here? Do I go after the Massachusetts? Nope, it looks like I'm turning out. Nope, oh, there's the enemy Moskva. Enemy Conquer. Enemy team's only down to four ships, and we are down to six. So we should have this in the bag, especially with two caps and about a 500 point lead. So yeah, Colbert's a lot of fun. <laughs> I do actually recommend this ship, especially if you enjoy the American light cruiser playstyle of hiding behind islands or using your decent range or being able just to kite pretty well. The uh, Colbert is pretty forgiving at it. I'm loading Armor Pearson because that is a broadside muscle. Turn to get more guns into the fight. This isn't the nice armor piercing of the Minotaur. Oh, there's High Caliber. Over 200,000 damage as I continue to rain armor piercing down on the Mosva. Would a HE work better? Maybe? Mosva turns, shoots back, I angle away, and it minimizes the damage I take. I'm looking for the Massachusetts. Oh, there he is. And he detonates me. <laughs> well, I mean. There's more flags. I should probably run a dead flag, but I mean, 16 inch guns from the Massachusetts can overmatch the entirety of the Colbert, so I probably would have died anyway. But still, 211,000 damage in this match. Not bad. Not bad at all. All that's left is for my team to mop up what's left. Moskva is burning and facing down in Minnesota. He's also got an Ochakov shooting his flank. Lightning's over there, shooting torpedoes at the Massachusetts. Oh, Nikolai Kuchizov is on that Mosfa. Just saw the flare go off. The torpedoes from the Lightning are going to miss, it looks like. He found the gap in between them all. Mosfa's down. I guess even that uh, dispersion buff, or yeah, dispersion buff for the Mosfa didn't help it the captain. Lightning is now peppering the Massachusetts with high explosives, set them on fire. I don't know if that's one or two fires, but the Ma Massachusetts damage controlled it. it. does realize there's an angry smoke screen over there, and angry smoke screens seem to normally have torpedoes. Unless it's a freeze -like, for obvious reasons. Minnesota does have that 40 second reload, that's why I'm guessing it's took him so long to shoot. He does kill Massachusetts. That just leaves the Adigo, which has survived since the beginning. That is the same Adigo I lit up earlier. And the Conqueror. Conqueror's recovered a lot of health from, you know, all the pain and misery it caused him. Adigo isn't long for this world. I mean, he just took high explosive. He's shooting armor piercing at somebody. Maybe the Ochakov or the Kagero. But that fire is not going out yet. And the Adigo doesn't look like he has a healer at the moment. And the Kremlin shooting high explosive kills the Adigo. Uh, that Kremlin does realize he's in a Kremlin, right? The Kremlin's armor piercing is really good considering it's 18 inch armor piercing conquers now reversing away from the destroyer and everybody else on my team and the kremlin is coming up on his flank conquer shoots high explosive at the minnesota because he's a conqueror gagger is launching torpedoes towards the conqueror Yakushikov's firing high explosive that is an angled in battleship so yeah, that's obviously the right choice but the kremlin here Watch this. Broadside Conqueror. Kremlin can get all three turrets in to shoot him. And he fires high explosive. Excuse me? Why? I have no idea. But that's going to be it for this match. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. And I'll catch you all next time. This is Numpire. Signing off.
雪風様の実力なの